Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. This is the third in the Cormoran Strike series by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling, um, after The Cuckoo's Calling and The Silkworm. The plot is that Robin Ellicott, who is Cormoran Strike's sidekick, secretary, partner in crime, not crime, opposite of crime, partner in solving crime, she gets mailed a severed leg and Cormoran's like, there are three or four people in my past that could have sent you a severed leg. Um, so he spends the whole book investigating these people. The police have other leads. So Robin is being stalked by the killer and we get some chapters from the killer's perspective as well. And all in all, it's a bloody good whodunit. I really enjoyed this, quite a bit more than the first two and I don't really know why. Maybe it's like the familiarity with the characters, um, maybe just the, the subject matter um, was more interesting to me. I just really, I just loved every second of it. I thought it was great. I can't wait for more. The first thing I want to talk about actually doesn't really have anything to do with this book um, and it is about audiobooks. You may see that I'm not holding a copy of Career of Evil uh, and that's because I listen to it as an audiobook. It's extremely rare that I'll do an audiobook review and I was thinking about this and it kind of came down into my mind that I listen to audiobooks for pure entertainment and then I read books for entertainment as well but also education. It's that I don't think very fully about the audiobooks I listen to because I take them less seriously because I can miss things and still just kind of go along with them and when I'm reading I would never ever miss like a page or paragraph a word. And also I think that when you read a novel you kind of you set your own pace so you can pause at any moment and like absorb it you know and think about it and you even think about it as you're reading it because that's your primary focus but when I'm listening to audiobooks I tend to be doing other work or like traveling or like cooking you know like multiple things are going on at once so I think I shouldn't do reviews on audiobooks because I'm not taking them seriously so I can't take a video on them seriously I've been thinking about this and realizing that's just wrong why can't I think complexly about a work that's just in a different medium. I don't know why I had that trigger in my mind for it being like, oh, let's just listen to the audiobook and it won't mean as much, it won't like hit me as hard. Actually, it's just a different way of consuming it. I do listen to audiobooks at between two and three times speed. So what may take me 20 hours to read in a book, I listen to in about six hours of audiobook. So yeah, there's definitely a loss of thinking in there. And I 100% don't think about it as seriously. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't think about it at all. I was sitting with my flatmate the other day talking about this book and how I really liked it um, and he was like, oh great, can't wait to see the video and I was like, oh, I'm not doing a video on it because I listened to it as an audiobook and he was like, what, why does that make a difference? And I said like, because I don't think about things as fully, blah blah blah, but then I also just started talking about the book um, and I just finished talking he was like, well that's, that's your video right there, you just like brought up three points that you'd want to talk about in a video and I was like, oh. So that's why I'm now doing a video on this, why that wasn't quite related to the book at hand, but you know. So the next thing I want to talk about, which is linked to the previous one, um, is the momentum of a novel like this. I don't think I've ever read a crime whodunit kind of novel at all. I think I've only ever listened to them in audiobooks. And I think it's just because I wouldn't be able to stop reading it. In these kind of books, there's like a looming suspense throughout it, which I don't think you get in most fiction. Um, most fiction has lulls and it needs those lulls to accentuate the heights. It needs the contrast between the high energy and the low energy parts to kind of give the book balance. But I think with crime novels especially, um, you can't get that because it needs to continue the suspense um, to grip you and to make you want to read it more. And for the climax at the end to really feel strong, you need to have been thinking about it all the way through. Career of Evil and the whole Cormoran Strike series is set in London, which I've always thought of as just a bit of a novelty. It's just kind of fun when they like go around places you know. Uh, but this one especially had quite a few bits set in East London, like where I live, and it's so weird and interesting. Like they mention pubs I go to, they like one of the characters lives on a street that's literally a hundred yards that way. And one that's really cool because it makes me think that JK Rowling has been like walking around where I live. Two is that it makes it so much more real for me as a reader and that I can really contextualize where he is and like imagine it as if it were in the real world. Like I had nightmares when I was listening to this book. Like, and I never, I never get that. I have nightmares, not because it's like that gruesome, um, but just because I know that that could happen. It could happen to me as I walk home, you know? And it's so well set and contextualized that it's really realistic. But the third thing I think is just how valuable a familiarity with place is in books. Like hands up, I read a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction, like a lot. And one of the, one of the things I really, really like about it is just that it's in a place I'm really familiar with. So a lot of things that had to be said and they can focus on like 
new characters, new things, different things. You still have that rooted core of a space that you already know. I do really like reading books about places I haven't been to or about completely invented places, but there's something about it just tying into your life that makes it so much more like urgent and relatable. I know there are tons and tons of books set in London and I haven't read many, um, so if you'd like to recommend me any books set in London, please do, I'm all ears. So this has kind of been a video about Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't picked up any of the Cormoran Strike novels yet, I would strongly encourage you to because they're great and they're only getting better and even if it's not a genre you dip into a lot it's like really high quality so i hope this video has given you something to think about uh, and i'll see you soon bye